Hello everyone, in this video we are going to study elimination reactions. Let me briefly introduce to you the plan of the current lecture. We'll begin with the classification of elimination reactions and continue with the three main mechanisms of beta eliminations E1, E1CB and E2. We'll discuss the energy profiles of all three mechanisms. Then we'll take a look at the 3D animations that illustrate every mechanism. Let's go! Let us begin with the definition of elimination reaction. Reactions in which two atoms or atom groups X and Y are removed from a compound are named eliminations. It is important to note that X and Y can belong to the same molecule or they can be parts of different molecules. On the slide, the first possibility is demonstrated on the top and numbered 1, whereas the second general mechanism is depicted below and is denoted with number 2. You can also clearly see how leaving groups are generalized with capital letters X and Y, which are colored with blue and green respectively. I would like to stress out that both colorings are going to be used during the whole lecture consistently, so you will be able to easily determine which atoms and atom groups are eliminated. Elimination of two bromine atoms from 1,3-dibromopropane mediated by magnesium illustrates the first general mechanism, whereas the hydrohalogenation of iodoethane represents the second one. Furthermore, X and Y can be attached not only to carbon atoms, but also to heteroatoms. Carbon atoms, in turn, can be sp3 or sp2 hybridized. However, in this course, we will consider only sp3 hybridized carbon, as such eliminations are way more popular in organic chemistry. And here we come to something so special about elimination reactions. Depending on the distance between the atoms or atom groups X and Y, their elimination has a distinct designation. So if X and Y are attached to the same carbon atom, the elimination is then classified as alpha elimination. Parenthetically, there is a useful designation for two substituents that are attached to the same atom. They are named geminal. For instance, let us take a look at the dehydrohalogenation of trichloromethane mediated by sodium hydroxide. The typical product of such a reaction is carbene, neutral electron deficient molecule containing a carbon atom with a valence of 2 and 2 unshared valence electrons. Now, let us consider another case, namely when X and Y are bonded to neighbored carbons. The elimination is designated then as beta elimination. By the way, there is a special name for two substituents which are bonded to neighbored atoms. Chemists call them vicinal. The beta eliminations lead to the formation of pi bond. In order to better understand this type of elimination, take a look at the reaction presented on the slide. Here, you can see the dehydrobromination of 2-bromo-2-methylbutane under basic conditions, which yields as main product isobutene. If X and Y are attached to carbon atoms, which are separated with N carbons, then their removal is named 1N elimination. So this elimination leads either to the formation of pi bond or to the cyclic product. On the slide, you can see two examples of 1N eliminations. The first reaction above represents the dehalogenation of 1,4-dibromobut2-ene in the presence of metallic zinc. Let us number the carbon atoms. 1, 2, 3 and 4. You can clearly see that X and Y are attached to the first and the fourth carbons. The major product of this reaction is buta-1,3-diene. You are already familiar with the second example of 1N eliminations, which leads to the formation of a cyclic product, namely cyclopropane. I hope the numbering in this case is obvious, as alpha and beta eliminations are much more popular than other types of eliminations, this video will be dedicated to the description and thorough discussion. Now, let us focus on beta eliminations as they represent the nucleus of our today's lecture. What makes up the difference between the beta elimination mechanisms? We can differentiate between three mechanisms of beta eliminations. 
they differ from each other in the timing of CX and CY bonds breaking. Y is usually a hydrogen atom, and X represents the living group. We depicted exactly this case on the slide here. The first possibility which one can think about is to cleave both bonds simultaneously. It means the process is concerted and passes through the single transition state and forms no intermediates. I would like to turn your attention to the fact that concerted means only through one transition state and is not equivalent to simultaneous. There is another term that is responsible for simultaneous, namely synchronous. The difference between concerted and synchronous is not important for us now, and you can read about it in future in any textbook dedicated to physical organic chemistry. As you probably remember, the term concerted we have already discussed in our previous lecture about nucleophilic substitutions. Exactly this general mechanism in Curly Arrow's formalism is depicted on the left part of the screen. In order to better understand the first possibility of elimination, let us take a look at the energy profile of the reaction on the slide. It is obvious that it is a graph, where the reaction coordinate is an independent variable and energy is the dependent one. To be honest, the energy profile of the reaction has a clear mathematical definition. However, we will not discuss it thoroughly in this lecture, as it is the subject of theoretical chemistry. Nevertheless, it is worth noting that all points on the graph, in other words, all chemical structures such as products, reactants, transition states, and intermediates, are uniquely defined in mathematical terms. So, we will use them now for the graph description. For example, there is only one saddle point on the graph, which represents the transition state. There are no local minima, meaning that no intermediates form as the reaction proceeds. Lastly, there are two global minima. The first one represents reactants, substrate and base, denoted with capital B on the slide. The second minimum is products, namely living group, olefin and protonated base BH+. Also, you can see the activation energy of the reaction colored in red and reaction energy in yellow. We are not going to specify whether these energies are Gibbs-free energies or enthalpies, because this difference does not play an important role now. We can see that both bonds CY and CX are broken simultaneously. Such a reaction is called E2 by molecular elimination. I would like to turn your attention to the fact that the energy profile of E2 mechanism is very similar to that of SN2, which we have discussed in the previous lecture. The good example of bimolecular elimination is the dehydrohalogenation of 2-bromobutane mediated by hydroxide anion. There are usually two reactants in eliminations. The first one is base, represented by hydroxide anion in this special case, and the substrate, containing living group represented by bromide in case of 2-bromobutane. Hydroxide anion attacks beta-hydrogen atom, and as you can see, Simultaneously, carbon bromide bond begins to break. The reaction passes through only one transition state in which both CH and CBr bonds, highlighted in red and blue, are ready to cleave. The reaction yields 2 butene, bromide anion, and a water molecule. 2D representations are sometimes not so easily understandable, but are by far the most popular in organic chemistry, so let us look at them. Now, you can see the two-dimensional representation of the reaction mechanism on the slide. I would like to stress the fact that curly arrows, lone pairs, and bonds in two-dimensional representation are colored consistently with bonds forming and cleaving in 3D. Here, you can also see reactants, transition state, and products of the same reaction. Now you are familiar with the general idea of how the E2 eliminations proceed. I hope you remember that there are two more mechanisms to clarify. Let us begin to consider the second mechanism. Another possibility is to break the CX bond before CH. This process leads to the formation of carbocation intermediate, which reacts further with base, yielding the corresponding compound with pi bond. Such a reaction is called E1 monomolecular elimination, and this general mechanism can be seen on the left. 
Look at the energy profile of the E1 mechanism on the right part of your slide. You can clearly see the local minimum represented by carbocation. This intermediate is separated from reactants and products by two local maxima, which are transition states. You would ask, why is it important to know? And the answer is clear. The number of transition states defines the number of different activation energies. Obviously, there are two of them differing from each other in magnitude. This difference will be very important a bit later when we will discuss rate laws. Lastly, there are two global minima. The first one represents reactants, substrate and base, denoted with capital B on the slide. The second minimum is products, namely living group, olefin, and protonated base BH+. If you compare the energy profile of this mechanism with that of SN1 reaction, you will find out a lot of similarities. As usual, the reaction energy is depicted in yellow and activation energies in red. You can see a typical example of this mechanism, which is the hydrobromination of third bottle bromide mediated by water. The first step is represented by heterolytic cleavage of the CBR bond. The reaction passes through the first transition state and yields bromide anion and tertiary carbocation, quite stable intermediate. The stabilities of different carbocations have been also clarified in the lecture dedicated to nucleophilic substitutions. The second step of E1 mechanism is a proton transfer between base and carbocation. Obviously, water acts as a base in this case. It attacks beta hydrogen atom and abstracts proton passing through second transition state and yielding isobutin and hydroxonium ion. On the screen, you can see the products, whereas bromide anion is omitted for clarity. Now you can see the two dimensional representation of the reaction mechanism on the slide. Till this point of time, we have discussed two different timings of CX and CY bonds breaking, so there is only one possibility left. The last option is very similar to the previous mechanism. However, it differs in the sequence of bond breakage. First CH bond is broken, which leads to the formation of a carbon ionic intermediate. The second step is represented by the CX bond break, which leads to the formation of pi bond and an ion. Such a reaction is called E1CB, elimination from the conjugate base, because X is eliminated from the carbon ionic intermediate, which is the conjugate base of starting material. As usually, the general mechanism of this reaction is depicted on the left. The abbreviation EWG means electron withdrawing group. We will discuss it in detail a bit later in this lecture. Let us briefly examine the energy profile of this mechanism because it is the only way to understand the kinetics later. It can be found on the right. We can see that it is very similar to that of the E1 mechanism. The main difference is the negatively charged intermediate and the opposite sequence of CX bond cleavage and abstraction of the proton by the base. Furthermore, the activation energy of the first step is smaller than that of the second one. Several reactions follow this type of elimination mechanism. For instance, the formation of acrolein from beta hydroxypropanol mediated by hydroxide anion. During the first step, proton is abstracted by hydroxide anion, passes through the first transition state, and yields stable negatively charged intermediate, enolate, and a water molecule. Now you can see better the structure of enolate. The second step of E1CB mechanism is heterolytic cleavage of COH bond which proceeds via second transition state and leads to the formation of neutral stable acrolein and hydroxide anion. The structures of products can be better seen now, where the water molecule formed in the first step is omitted for clarity. The two-dimensional representation of the reaction mechanism is depicted on the slide. Ultimately, here is a brief summary of all three beta elimination mechanisms so you can explore the key differences between them. This was the last topic for today. Let us make a small recap of what we have learned. We have begun with the classification of eliminations and supported them with examples. 
Then we have defined the elimination reaction and proceeded further with the thorough discussion of the most important elimination mechanisms, which differed in the timing of the CX and CH bond cleavages. We have evaluated the general mechanisms of E2, E1 and E1CB and afterwards inspected corresponding energy profiles. Lastly, we have seen the 3D animations that illustrate every mechanism and compared them with the corresponding two-dimensional representations. In the next video, we are going to learn everything related to the kinetics of all discussed mechanisms. Furthermore, we'll evaluate the influence of different factors such as carbocation stability, leaving group ability, the polarity of solvents, and base concentrations on the E1 mechanism. I would like to remind you that if you have any questions related to this video or any topic in chemistry, biochemistry, or pharmaceutical sciences, you are more than welcome to ask them on our website or in the comments to this video. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for your attention and we'll meet once again in the next video.